to the Muslim world, especially to you, brothers and sisters, on the birth anniversary of our second Imam, the first grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Imam al-Hasan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. On the night of the 15th of the month of Ramadan, uh, in the third year after the Hijrah, after the migration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam from the holy city of Mecca to the holy city of Medina, on a night where the moon, the moon is full and bright, a brighter and more luminous moon came on that night that illuminated not only the sky of the holy city of Medina, but it actually illuminated the earth and the skies. It, illum it illuminated the whole worlds. And this light, this moon, is none other than our master, our leader. The pure Imam, the one who is known as Az Zaki, Imam Al Hassan Al Mushtaba, alayhi afdal al salati wa salam. Imam Al Hassan is the first son of Imam Ali alayhi salam and Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra, salamullahi alayha. She is the Al Kawthar that was gifted by Allah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the first of Sayyidah Zahra's progeny is Imam Al Hassan. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. So the progeny of Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra started with Imam al Hassan and continued up until today and will continue inshallah till the day of judgment. When Sayyidah Zahra alayhi, was blessed with uh, Imam al Hassan salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, she came to Amir al Mu'mineen and said to him, Ya Ali, name your child, name this child. So he said, it was never for me to precede Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in naming him. I cannot name him before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam came over, he saw the child, he kissed him, he recited adhan in his right ear, iqama in the left ear, and then he asked Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ya Ali, did you name, what's the name of your child? Amir al-Mu'mineen said, Ya Rasulullah, I cannot name him before you. I'm waiting for you to name him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and it was never for me to precede my Lord, the Almighty, in naming him. I cannot name him before my Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty revealed to Jibra'il that a grandson has been born to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, so go down, convey my salams, congratulate uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and say to him, Inna aliyan minka bi manzilati Haruna min Musa, fasammihi bism ibn Harun. Ali from you, ya Muhammad, is as the status of Harun is to Moses, is like Aaron is to Moses. Therefore name him with the name of the son of Harun. Name him with the name of the son of Aaron. So Jibra'il descended down, congratulated Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said to him that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding you that you should name him with the name of the son of Harun. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, and what is the name of the son of Harun? Jibra'il said, Shubbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Lisani Arabi. My language is Arabic. So Jibra'il said, then name him Al-Hasan. And Imam Al-Hasan was named by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that name for his love. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So tonight, brothers and sisters, I would like to focus on one important quality of the qualities of Imam Al-Hasan. This quality our holy Imam is known by. He is known, yesterday we talked about his Hilim, that he was known as Halimu Ahlil Bayt, the forbearing of the Ahlul Bayt, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim. Today we want to look at another quality, another characteristic of the character, characteristics of Imam Al Hassan, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayh, and it is the quality of generosity. He is known as Karimu. 
أهل البيت عليهم السلام The generous of the أهل البيت عليهم أفضل الصلاة والسلام Generosity is one of the noble qualities that are highly recommended in Islam and it is one of the qualities of all of Allah's prophets and the imams of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim afdal salati wassalam. Islam has praised uh, this, those who have this quality, the quality of generosity. And it is narrated by Amir al Mu'mineen uh, alayhi salam that he has said, Al Sakha'u, Al Sakha'u, Khulukul Ambiya. Generosity is the quality of the prophets. It's also narrated in Al-Kafi, in the book Al-Kafi, that our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salamhu alayhi, said that a man came to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and asked him this question. Ya Rasulallah, ayyun nasi afdaluhum imana? O Messenger of Allah, who from amongst people has the best faith, has the best iman? Who from amongst the people has the best faith and iman? The Holy Prophet ﷺ responded, Absatuhum kaffa. The one who, whose hand is open most or is most open. Meaning the one who is most generous. Notice that Rasulullah ﷺ made generosity one of the standards in which we measure, measure one's faith. Notice, uh, the Qur'an says, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ So taqwa, piety, uh, is one of the standards in which we measure someone's uh, faith, or whose closeness, uh, who is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also introduced another uh, standard in which we can measure someone's faith, and it is generosity. He said, the one who is most generous is the one who is best in faith. He has, uh, he is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has the best iman. It is also narrated from our sixth imam, Ja'far al-Sadiq sallallahu wa sallam that he said, As-Sakhiyu qareebun min Allah, qareebun min al-Nas, qareebun min al-Jannah. The one who is generous is close to Allah, close to people, and close to Jannah, close to paradise. وَالْبَخِيلُ بَعِيدٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ بَعِيدٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ قَرِيبٌ مِّنَ النَّارِ And the one who is a miser is far from Allah, far from people, and close to hell fire. The Holy Prophet ﷺ and his Ahlul Bayt السلام, they are the embodiment of generosity. If you want to see generosity walking on two legs, then just look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and his Ahlul Bayt alayhim as salam. They are our role models in each and every aspect in life. Imam Ali alayhi as salam was once seen standing beside a pile of gold and silver. Gold and dinar and silver dirhams. And he was pushing people backward. Then he divided all these coins amongst people and he took nothing home. Nothing to himself. Once Qambar, the faithful servant of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam, asked his master, asked Amir al Mu'mineen to go into one of the rooms in the house where he had hidden bags and vessels full of gold and silver, full of uh, golden dinar and silver dirhams. Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam asked him, What are these? Qambar said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, I always see you divide money amongst people and you leave nothing to yourself. So I decided to hide, keep some of that money in the room so that you can keep it for yourself. You know, in, in, in the time of hard uh, difficulty or if you are in need of money, I've hid some money for yourself. Now, Qambar had good intentions, but at the end, he did not understand everything of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam said, Would you like to bring fire to my house? Would you like to bring hell into my house? Then he drew his sword 
and he broke every vessel. And the money was there and he, he commanded Qambar to distribute all this gold and silver at the moment to the poor and the needy. And not to keep anything for himself. Then Amir al-Mu'mineen said, as he was pointing to this gold and silver, O oh, gold and O oh, silver, go and deceive anyone but me. You are able to deceive anyone, but you'll never be able to deceive Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. And this is not surprising from Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. This is not surprising from a man like Ali ibn Abi Talib. For he is the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in his praise. Uh, verse 9 of Surah Al-Hashr, Surah number 59. Verse 9, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا And they prefer them, they prefer the poor and the needy ones over themselves, even though poverty may afflict them. Agha, Mahdi, um, Agha Mirza Mahdi Puya Yazdi and Sir Mir Ahmad Ali, uh, they stated in the commentary of the Holy Quran, when uh, they were discussing uh, the exegesis of this holy verse, uh, verse 9 of Surah 59, uh, they said that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud reports that once after Salatul Isha, a man from amongst those who were praying behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after Salah, he stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, I am very poor, I am hungry. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned around to the Muslims who were praying behind him. He said, who amongst you will give this man food? Amir al muminin immediately stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'll take care of this man. He took this man to his home. He went into his home, and in his home there was only food enough for one person. A meal that is enough for one person. So he turned off the lamp that was there. He gave the lamp to Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayha and told her not to turn on the lamp until our guest finishes his food. Then he served him food and he sat beside him acting as if he was eating so that this poor person, his guest, would not feel discomfort as he ate all of the meal that was, all, all of the food that was in the house and the people of this house remained hungry. When Amir al Mu'mineen did that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse in the praise of Amir al Mu'mineen, saying, ala anfusihim, walaw kana bihim khasasa. They prefer them, they prefer to help the needy, the poor, the needy, uh, over themselves, before themselves, although poverty may inflict them. They were in a state of difficulty, they remained hungry. The people of the house, the Ahlul Bayt, remained hungry that night. But they prefer to feed the poor over feeding themselves. This is the house of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi who always put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They trust Allah under all circumstances, whether they, are, uh, they, are, they have wealth or whether, whether they're living in poverty. They have trust in Allah and they give in the way of Allah Trusting that the rizq will come and subhanallah rizq will come because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down sustenance and rizq on everyone. Once Amir al muminin alayhi salam entered into his house and found out that there is no food in the house. So he got out, he borrowed one golden dinar from someone and he went into the market. When he was in the market, he saw Maqdad also walking in the market. But Maqdad wasn't comfortable in his walk. So Amir al muminin told him, why are you walking in the market at such a time? You know, why are you not spending your time with your family? Maqdad said, I entered into the house and I found that my family has no food and my children are crying. And I could not bear the sorry plight of my children. I could not bear hearing their cries and their weeping out of hunger. So I got out of the house. So the Imam said, okay, what are you planning to do? 
It's like I'm walking around saying, I, I don't know what to do. I really have no plan. I don't know what to do. But I couldn't stand hearing the cries of my children. I don't have money. I don't have the means for providing food. Amir al-Mu'minin salam immediately gave him that golden dinar that he himself has borrowed to buy food for his own house, for his own family. And he returned home empty-handed. This is the house of generosity. This is the house where when, you, when, when we say they are the embodiment of generosity, this is the meaning of him. They give everything for the sake of Allah. وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً They prefer the needy and the poor before themselves, even though, uh, even, even, even though poverty may afflict them. Now if we want to define generosity, what is the definition of generosity? We can go to the Imam of generosity, our second Imam, Imam Al-Hasan Salawatullahi wa Salamu Alayhi. It is narrated in Tuhaf Al-Aqul that a man asked Imam Al-Hasan Alayhi Salam, Mal Karam, what is generosity? Imam Al-Hasan Alayhi Salam replied, Al-Ibtida'u bil-Atiyyati qabla al-Mas'ala. وَإِطْعَامُ الطَّعَامِ فِي الْمَحْلِ One who grants generously before being asked. The definition of generosity. One who grants generously before being asked. And one who uh, serves food and provides food at times of famine and drought where food is limited. So generosity is not when someone comes and asks you for help, then you provide. It's before being asked, you go and give. You don't wait for the person to come and ask you. You give before asking. Generosity is that, as Imam al-Hasan salam defined it. And providing food, giving food to people at times of difficulties, at the time of drought or Famine. Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam, he said, As Sakha makana btida, makana btida un, fa in kana an masalatin, fa haya un, watadamum. Generosity is that which one gives from himself before being asked. If he gives after being asked, then it is a result of shame and embarrassment. You're saving your face. You're trying not to be embarrassed and say no to others. But generosity is what? When you start giving before being asked. Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam also said, As-sakha an takuna bi malika mutabarri'a wa an mali ghayrika mutawarri'a. Generosity means being open-handed with your own wealth while being cautious with the wealth of others. Some people, especially that is known amongst the oppressive and tyrant rulers, they give some heavy gifts to people. They just give money, they give that to people so that people will love them. The issue is, do you call this generosity? Is it their money in the first place? Amir al muminin says, generosity has to be with your own money. When you generously give from your own wealth, but if you have money of others, then you have to be cautious with it. You cannot spend it, you cannot work with it, you cannot use it, unless you have permission from the owners of that money. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Let's hear a second salawat for the love of the Imam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A third one for the love of uh, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam also said, and that's an important point, brothers and sisters, also said, nas man adda zakata malih. The most generous of people is he who fulfills payment of the alms tax due upon him. Brothers and sisters, there are obligatory financial dues upon each and every one of us. Namely, khums and zakah. 
Those are obligatory financial dues. It is wajib upon each one of us to pay them. The Holy Prophet ﷺ says, those who are most generous are the ones who fulfill the payment of that obligatory uh, alms tax. It is in a, it's wrong for a person to leave the wajib and do the mustahab. Yes, giving sadaqah, recommended sadaqah, donating to charity, recommended, recommended donation to charity is something that is very, very good. But after payment of the obligatory dues. Remember what did Imam Ali say? That generosity means being open-handed with your own wealth and being cautious with the wealth of others. When the time for the obligatory financial due comes in, namely khumus or zakah, part of your wealth will not be part any will not be yours anymore. It will be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the poor and needy ones, for the Imam. That part of money is not yours. That twenty percent that you give, for example, in khumus, this is not your money. This is haqqul, haqqul imam. The right of the Imam, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one who uses this money is not generous anymore. He's using money that is not his, that he does not own it. So one must be careful of that. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has pointed to this aspect, that the one who is considered most generous is he who fulfills his obligatory financial dues. Our sixth Imam, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam, also pointed to this fact. He said, As-Sakhiyu al-Kareem, alladhi yunfiqu malahu fi haq. The kind and generous person is he who spends his wealth for a right cause. So the first cause that one should spend his wealth in is completing and uh, paying his obligatory financial dues, then going on, and giving the recommended sadaqah, the recommended charity, the recommended donations, supporting the community in various ways, and so on and so forth. But one should not forget his wajib. It's like a person who offers all his mustahab salawat, all his recommended salawat, he prays a hundred rak'ah in Shah Ramadan, but he does not pray salat al-subuh and salat al You see? One must do his obligations first, his wajibat first, and then do the mustahab. Doing the mustahab without doing the wajib is not, is not the right or the most correct thing to do. So one needs to be careful of that. Just like you have to do your wajib salah before the mustahab, you have to do your wajib siyam before the mustahab, also paying your obligatory financial dues is important before going on and doing what is mustahab. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Now, when we discuss the topic of generosity, we'll have to discuss our second Imam, Imam al Hassan, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. For he is Karimu Ahl al Bayt. He is the generous of the Ahl al Bayt, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim. He gave all of his wealth for the sake of Allah twice in his lifetime. And he gave half of his wealth for the sake of Allah three times in his lifetime. The Imam salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi would never say no to a beggar. He would never refuse a request of a beggar. Once he was asked, Ya Aba Muhammad, Ya Imam Hassan, why do we never see you say no to a beggar? Why don't you ever refuse a request of a beggar. Look at the response of the Imam. He says, Inni lillahi sa'il, wa fihi raghib, wa ana astahi an akuna sa'ilan, wa aruddu sa'ilan. Most surely I beg Allah, I pray to Allah, I have requests to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I desire from Him, and I feel ashamed that I myself refuse a beggar or a request of a beggar and I myself beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and expect him to answer my requests. We are in the holy month of Ramadan. 
This is the month of mercy, the month of forgiveness. This is the month in which our prayers are answered. Layal al-Qadr, the nights of Qadr are coming up. Friday, Sunday, and Tuesday of uh, the upcoming Friday, Sunday, and Tuesday, inshallah, will be the nights of Qadr, the most important nights of the year. In this month, we are praying to Allah, we are supplicating. We want Him to grant us tawfiq in this world and in the uh, akhirah, in the afterworld, in the hereafter. We have so many requests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We expect Him to answer these requests. But is it appropriate that I expect this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I myself refuse the request of anyone who asks for assistance or help? Imam al Hassan says, I feel ashamed of doing so. I cannot refuse a request from someone who requires assistance while I myself in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I myself request have requests for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Imam al Hassan says, Allah made me used to a habit that He showers me with His blessings. And I have also made Him used to a habit that I distribute these blessings amongst His creation. So I am afraid that if I cut the habit by stop giving, giving or distributing to people, that He subhanahu wa ta'ala will also stop His habit by showering me with all of his blessings. The Imam is reminding us that this rizq, this sustenance, this wealth that I have in my hands is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who gave us this sustenance. How am I going to spend it? Am I going to spend it in a good way? Allah will give me even more. He will bless me even more. Or am I going to use it in a wrong manner? And then sayyat and sins will be written in my sahifa. Once Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and Abdullah ibn Ja'far, they were um, traveling towards uh, Mecca, the holy city of Mecca, uh, to perform pilgrimage. They came across an old lady who lives in a tent. So they asked her if they can rest in that tent. and She invited them in. They asked her, is there something to drink? She only had one cup of milk, lamb's milk. And she offered them the only cup to them. Then they asked her, uh, do you have something to eat? And she had only one lamb, one goat. So she slaughtered the goat. And she offered them the food. When they were about to leave, they said, O oh servant of Allah, we are some people from Quraysh. We are going to make pilgrimage to the sacred house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we safely come back home to Medina, come to us that we may reward you for this favor. Look at this lady and look at the generosity of this lady. She offered everything she had for her guests. And she does not even know who they are. She didn't recognize them. When her husband later on came back, he wasn't happy at what she did, offering the only goat that they had to complete strangers. After a while, their, their financial situation deteriorated. They had to move from that area to the city to find some to find a job so as they were walking in the streets of the holy city of medina they happened to pass by the house of imam al hasan alayhi salam imam al hasan was standing beside his door he recognized the lady he said to her oh servant of allah do you recognize me she said no i don't recognize you he reminded her he said oh servant of allah i am that guest of yours that you had served your only goat to them and the, the last cup of milk that you had with yourself. Come, let me reward you. And he offered her, he gave her, he gifted her a thousand goats and a thousand golden dinar. Then he sent her to the house of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, who gave her another thousand goats and a thousand golden dinar. 
And then Imam al Hussein led her to the house of Abdullah ibn Ja'far, who gave her a thousand goats and another thousand golden dinar. So this woman's situation changed from poverty into becoming extremely wealthy. All this was possible due to the charity and favor of Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba, alayhi afdal al salati wa salam, for his love, sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. It is known that whoever used to receive the charity of Imam al Hassan, whoever used to receive the favors of Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, he would, he, his situation would change from poverty into riches. He would not uh, be in need of asking anyone else after Imam al Hassan salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Whoever receives one of the bags of dinars or dirhams from the Imam would not be in need of anyone after him. When one knocks on the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then would anyone be in need of anything else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They are the manifestation of Allah's mercy. They are the manifestation of Allah's generosity. Once a Bedouin came to Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam to ask him for a need. So the Imam salamullahi alayhi said to his servant, give him all the money that is in the safe. He brought the money, he placed it in front of the Imam. It was 20,000 silver dirham, the money in the case. He gave it all to that Bedouin. The Bedouin said to the Imam, my master, do you not let me tell you about my need and praise you before giving me money? It is a custom amongst the Arabs that if someone is in need, he would not go to the person and ask directly that I am in need of one, two, three. He would go and start praising the person, mentioning some of his good qualities, so on and so forth. And then after that, he would ask for a need. So that Bedouin came to the Imam, the Imam did not wait for him to say a word. He immediately said, give all the money. So the Bedouin said, okay, you're giving me generously, but at least let me praise you. Let me say a word. Let me ask for my need. The Imam Salamullah Alayh began saying, Nahnu unasun nawaluna khadilu, yarta'u fihi al-raja'u wal-amalu, tajudu qabla al-su'al anfusuna, khawfan ala ma'i wajhi man yasalu, law alima al-bahr fadluna ilina, laghasa min ba'di fayidhihi khajilu. We are people who is giving is fresh. The hopeful enjoys it. Our souls Give generously before being asked, before being begged, for fear that the beggar may lose his faith. I mean, it's not easy for a person to ask for a need. So the Imam wants to give before the person even asks. If the sea came to know the excellence of our generosity, of our giving, it would decrease after its overflow out of shame. One day, Imam al-Hassan salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi saw a slave. That slave was eating a piece of bread. He would eat one piece and he would throw the other piece to a dog that was there nearby. And then he would eat and he would feed the dog. Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam came to that slave. He told him, why are you doing this? Why are you not eating all the bread? I mean... You're not giving much. It's, you're just giving this bread. I'm sure that this bread is barely enough for you. And you're giving half of it to a dog. You know. The slave said, Yabna Rasulullah, I feel ashamed from my dog that I eat and I do not feed it. When the Imam saw that this person has mercy towards Allah's creation, he has that kindness to Allah's creation. He said to him, wait there, do not move. He went to the owner of that slave. He bought the slave, and then he bought the whole garden that the owner owned, and then he went back to the slave. He told him, you are free for the sake of Allah, and this garden is a gift from me to you for your generosity. I am rewarding you for this generosity and the kindness that you have towards Allah's 
creation. Look at the generosity of our Imam. One day, our Imam also passed by some poor people. When they saw the Imam, those poor people, they were eating somewhere on the side of the street, and they were sitting on the ground and eating bits of dry pieces of bread. When they saw the Imam, they said, yeah, Imam, we're inviting you to eat with us. The Imam, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, dismounted his camel and said, indeed, Allah does not love the one who is proud. Yes, they're inviting me over dried pieces of bread, but that's something that's very nice. That one is generous with whatever he has. Then he began eating with them. Then he invited them to his own house. He fed them. He answered all their needs. He provided for them clothes. And he offered them uh, money. He turned their situation from poverty into riches and they left his home happy. This is the generosity of Imam al-Hasan salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. His mercy, his compassion reached everyone, the rich and the poor, the honorable and the other uh, classes of the society, if you want to say, the elders and the youngers, younger ones. Rahmatullahi al-wasa. You know, the mercy of Allah encompasses everybody. They are the manifestation of the mercy of Allah. They are the manifestation of Allah's compassion. May Allah grant us the tawfiq to be amongst those who remain steadfast on the path of our imams. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim. To remain steadfast on the path of Imam al-Hasan. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim. This Imam who is known for his forbearance and who is known for his generosity. May Allah grant us the tawfiq to apply their teachings in our day-to-day -day life. May Allah grant us the tawfiq to be amongst those who visit his holy shrine in Jannatul Baqi' in the holy city of Medina in this dunya and gain his intercession, his shafa'a and the shafa'a of his uh, of the of the imams of the Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim in the day of judgment with the blessings of a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Let us uh, remember our deceased uh, family members, our deceased community members, all the deceased mu'mineen and mu'minat with the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha before it, allowed salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Up to you. Q&A then Kahoot? And when, when is cake time? Ah, oh, mashallah. That's the most important uh, uh, part of the program. Okay. So cake is coming up. But while cake is coming up, uh, if anyone has a question, comment, feedback, idea, thought, the floor is open. Yes. What are? Very good question. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So the question is, why do we believe our Imams are greater than the Prophets? Uh, first of all, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad is the greatest of all of Allah's creation. So he is greater than all. Uh, there is no doubt in that and there is no question in this. There is no one greater than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The question is what about the other Prophets? The position, the status of Imamate is greater than the status of Nubuwa, Prophet. 
What is our proof? The Quran tells us that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 124, وَإِذِ قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهدي الظالمين and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tried Ibrahim with certain words and he completed them وذبتلا إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمون قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما he said I am making you I am making you I am appointing you as an imam upon men when Ibrahim saw the great status of Imamit, he wished that it would uh, be in his progeny. So he said, وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي And of my progeny, Allah did not say no. He said, لَا يَنَالُ عَهْدِ الظَّالِمِينَ uh, He said, the unjust of them would not, uh, my covenant would not reach the unjust of them, those who are unjust of them. My covenant meaning the Imamit, would not reach those who are unjust. Prophet Ibrahim he went through many trials in his life. In the beginning of his life, he had to fight or speak openly against uh, idol worship. And he even went to the extent where he destroyed and demolished all the idols in his town with the exception of the largest one, and he put the axe on the neck of the largest idol. When people came back and saw what he did, they came and asked him, he's like, why are you asking me? The criminal is the, 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 the largest of your idols here. He has the, the axe. He wanted to bring them back to their senses. And then, you know, they, the punishment was what? They decided to throw him in the fire. So they gathered wood, from uh, everywhere and the fire was extremely uh, hot to the extent that they could not throw him like that they had to use the catapult to be able to throw him in they had to go so far away from the fire because of its heat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him by making it cool and peaceful on Ibrahim and he went through many trials he uh, after he um, he did not have children till old age. And then when he had his child Ismail alayhi salam, Allah commanded him to leave. Uh, uh, he, was, he was in Iraq and Syria, these areas where there is agriculture and farming and there is life. Allah commanded him go, to go where? To Mecca, to Hijaz. Mecca and Hijaz is, where, is a place where there is desert. Basically there is nothing. There was no, not even Zamzam at that time. Then Allah commanded him to keep his wife and child over there and leave them. And leave them. Imagine after all these years, he finally had a child, Ismail, and then what? You have to leave him where? In the desert. Where? In Baytul, in, in, in Baytullah, in Baytul Mukarram, in the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the holy, in the holiest place. But you know how difficult this is. You're not leaving them in a normal circumstance, in a normal place. So he had to go back. And he obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did what he did. And then Hajar, you know the story of Hajar and how Zamzam came in and then people started coming in. And Ismail grew till he become, became a youth. This is when Ibrahim was allowed to come back. He came back and his son is now a youth, helping him out in building the house, in building the, the Kaaba and so on and so forth. Then the ultimate taste test came in.